protocol. And the regional protocol, which we have hooked uh, before, uh, may be hooked by a firewall. So we can't rely on a send handler or send packets handler pointers anymore. Uh, so there are three possibilities uh, how to find the regional uh, functions uh, which may send packets to the network uh, by passing any firewall installed. Uh, we may find these functions uh, by tunneling the firewall or by searching in this image or by temporarily registering and binding a dummy protocol. And this uh, protocol registration uh, should not be called by a firewall uh, because um, we have to find these functions and this msend and others. Uh, and we don't want to get these functions hooked. Uh, so let's move to, present, uh, to the demo. Uh, I prepared the VMware installation uh, with two popular firewalls. First is zone alarm and the other one is outpost. Uh, you see that uh, a network is not trusted and uh, by default it should, uh, the firewall should ask a user about every uh, suspicious packet which comes uh, to this network and from it. Uh, Let's install a rootkit. Uh, first, I show the uh, solution number two. Here you see the process of uh, registering a protocol uh, silently. Uh, uh, first, we should find uh, in this uh, protocol list head, and uh, we perform in this by working the in this register protocols three. Uh, first, we find uh, spin lock, protocol spin lock, and then uh, we acquire it and uh, work the list to find the original uh, registered system protocols. Uh, but uh, here, we first, we check uh, for. Um, valid pointers to the in this protocol list and uh, we uh, we don't want to use f uh, fun uh, pointers uh, that do not point to in this protocol list head uh, then we ripping the code off in this driver and patching all the uh, references to in this protocol list to other uh, list head, uh, which was um, uh, allocated by us. Uh, here you see that uh, anti-hooking uh, has succeeded, and uh, it just generated uh, 30 kilobytes of code instead of, for example, 100 kilobytes of original in this image. Uh, then we move to Uh, protocol list and uh, uh, iterating through the protocols which are registered in it. Uh, we uh, bind our custom TCP stack to the IP which is not used by the original stack and then uh, we start a FTP server. So let's try to uh, see how it will operate when uh, we stop the, all the incoming and outcoming uh, traffic in the zone alarm uh, firewall. I should mention here that uh, to install a rootkit driver, I disabled the um, con driver installation uh, controlling functionality in uh, zone alarm by myself. So it will not ask me uh, when the driver is lo uh, being loaded. OK, uh, so, so now I connect to my FTP server from the original uh, box. 
And you see that uh, even if we blocked all incoming and outgoing traffic in the zone alarm, uh, I still can read the directory of, of the uh, system. So I could, uh, could download and upload any files. Uh, this, this happens because uh, we hooked network subsystem below uh, the zone alarm itself. The third uh, approach, uh, as you remember, was about hooking X filter structures. As you see, uh, it's uh, a bit easier to understand what is uh, what is going on because uh, we will not uh, we, we don't uh, um, walk any and uh, this image uh, code. We just uh, hook. Uh, the uh, randomly chosen uh, X-binding uh, X infrastructure here. And uh, you see that uh, both rootkits are run simultaneously. And uh, if you try to connect to other FTP server, which uh, is run on the original IP, which uh, of the original TCP IP stack in the system, it will succeed too. Uh, so uh, you see that both rootkits are run on different IP addresses, and uh, one rootkit shares the IP address with the original TCP stack of the operation system, and uh, the traffic settings in the zone alarm are Set that uh, set to block any incoming and outgoing traffic. So let's continue with presentation. Uh, the last thing I should mention is uh, is hardening firewalls against uh, these attacks. Um, you see uh, that uh, a firewall should operate at a more privileged level than a rootkit. Uh, because if a rootkit is run in kernel mode, uh, it, uh, it will be able to patch any protection uh, which is introduced by a firewall. Uh, so the only solution for firewall vendors is to complicate uh, their solutions, uh, their firewalls. So maybe a full rewrite of this driver is a good idea. Uh, what about monitoring uh, packet receives? Uh, a firewall uh, may find and link it protocols by walking uh, the X filter uh, list in the and this miniport block, and uh, this is uh, actually how uh, this packet indication code addresses um, registered protocols, and uh, it's not uh, using and this protocol list actually. Um, for, th for sending packets, uh, this is not so easy to do uh, because a rootkit um, may not use its send handler, uh, but it can call um, this uh, m send uh, functions directly. So a firewall should at least hook code of and this m send and uh, when send functions. Uh, in hope to catch any packets sent by a rootkit. But this is not a safe solution. Uh, the nature of packet send interface uh, does not require any special system object registration. So it's uh, possible to send packets uh, which, will, which will be not caught by any firewall uh, since uh, this behavior uh, doesn't like to, to be changed in the near future. Thanks.